When I arrived at Oxford University back in 1988, psychologists were studying sight in one lab and hearing in another. And I thought to myself, well, that doesn't make much sense, does it? Historically, neuroscience and psychology has always explored the senses separately. The reality is you cannot consider vision without also considering hearing, tasting without also thinking about smelling. All the senses are intimately connected. Multisensory perception turns out to be the norm and not the exception. So this new cross-modal way of thinking, this sense exploration, is leading to much richer multisensory memories and experiences. And beyond that, we have a whole generation of young people who are interested in this almost synesthetic connections between their senses and the surprises that that might bring. Today, more and more brands are investigating sense exploration, and they're taking their notes straight out of the neuroscience textbook. In science, the principles we live by are to be aware of sensory dominance, to maximize the super additive, and to minimize the sub additive or incongruent. Scientists and designers need to be aware of sensory dominance. Let's take an example of hearing and vision. Watch this video. What sound do you think you're hearing? Bar. Whenever you look to the left, your brain will tell you you're hearing bar. But whenever you look to the right, you'll suddenly start hearing da instead. Of course, the sound is always the same. It's always kind of a muffled bar sound, but your brain is integrating what it sees and what it hears and being dominated by those lip movements on the screen. Normally, we think we can differentiate what we see from what we hear. But in fact, very often, those senses are intimately intertwined. I found that one of the best places to study multisensory interaction is food. Diners and restaurateurs are always surprised to learn that higher pitched music will bring out the sweetness in a dish, whereas playing lower pitched, more brassy sounds will accentuate the bitter notes instead. We're in a constant state of evaluating signals and avoiding noise. However, if two of the senses are activated at the same time, then the brain confirms it's worth paying attention to. This is what we were playing with, with the sound of the sea experiment, when people are tasting the seafood and their experience is enhanced by the sounds of the sea playing in the background. In the world of sonic seasoning, sound really is the forgotten flavour sense. As sensory alchemists, we really need to think about the balance between the senses, because when that's not right, it can really ruin the experience. Another everyday example of subadditivity is when we're watching a movie and the voice that we hear has been badly dubbed. I can't help you. Go, leave me. There's no use. No matter how hard you try, it's a distracting and unpleasant experience. Another example of subadditivity, but this time one that's been used deliberately, is when the marketeers have decided to change the colour of a drink, say something like a raspberry flavoured drink. They make it blue, raspberries aren't blue, so it's incongruent, it may be subadditive, but nevertheless it captures our attention, that blue just stands out in amongst everything else. We're all hungry for synesthetic connections. After all, the total work of art is to be in a space where all of your senses are stimulated simultaneously. A sense exploration arms us with capabilities to enhance our experience. What new connections will we discover 